Okay, this one is about the ECM or the electronically commutated motor. These things have been gaining gobs in popularity in the last few years because they are a variable speed blower uh, that kind of adapts to the load. Uh, these are a different, uh, different breed of cat than motors we've had before. This end bell here probably has most of the service problems on these things. They, uh, all of them I've seen so far have been uh, ball bearings. Uh, the windings can go out of them, but it's very unusual. Uh, at least I haven't seen it much. I suppose anything could happen. Now here's another picture of this. We've got the end bell removed. This end bell is replaceable as a unit, so uh, you do not necessarily have to play, replace a motor when you replace the end bell. Uh, it comes off right here, and you can get an idea of what this thing looks like uh, and how it works. Now this one is uh, covered in epoxy. Uh, I assume that's so nobody can get in and try to fix it. Okay, uh, this thing has MOSFETs in it. These MOSFETs are right here. They're mounted to this aluminum heat sink. Uh, those are the electronic switches that keep it going and change the speed of the motor. Uh, let's take a look at the motor itself. Okay, this is a view of the end. and If you look close, you can kind of see those windings in there. They don't really look like most uh, fan motor windings. Um, because this is a DC three-phase motor, which doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but it is, uh, that is what it is. I'm going to take the end bell off here and we'll take a look at inside and see what we can find. Okay, now we have a view with the end bell off. See the ball bearing here. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and take this thing, take the uh, rotor out and we'll take a look at it. Okay, here's a view with the uh, rotor removed and you can see the rotor. This is permanent magnet. So it's a permanent magnet rotor and then over here we have the uh, windings a little bit different looking. There's no start, there's no run. It's three phase, but it's three phase DC. Uh, most of the time these motors give us no trouble at all. I haven't seen much problem with the motors. Uh, they start uh, as a soft start, meaning they don't jerk when they start, they just slowly wind up. So that's very easy on the windings. Remember, if windings are loose in the stator here, if they're loose, every time that motor starts, they jerk back the opposite way. When they do that, that's what wears off the insulation and shorts them out. These motors start very soft start. Uh, it's built into the controls on them. So there's not much problem with the motors themselves, maybe a ball bearing failure or two, but that's about it. Um, most of the time, the problem is in the end bell. Okay, here we are back with the thing semi uh, reassembled. As I said before, the problems with these things mostly are due to this. This end bell, uh, I don't know how they're doing now, I haven't seen any fail lately, but usually the MOSFETs fail. As I told you, the MOSFETs are right in here, right there, on, mounted on this heat sink to pull the heat off. Um, there's nothing you can do about them. If they fail, they just fail, that's all there is to it. Uh, you got to go to the, generally the uh, manufacturer, equipment manufacturer, distributor, and uh, 
pick up a spare part and put it on. A lot of these motors have been replaced when it was this. Remember this thing, there's not much to this. Permanent magnet rotor, uh, windings that are all in 120 phase. This is the part that tells this how fast to go. This essentially takes alternating current, turns it into DC, then pulses a DC at different rates to get a different speed on this motor. It's kind of remanufacturing AC except it's actually DC pulsed. Now that's kind of a nutshell sort of a explanation of these things. There's a lot more to them and I will talk about them later on in some of the future videos. But from a troubleshooting point of view, uh, most of these things, if it fails to work, chances are this end bell has failed. Uh, most of the distributors have got a tester for this. We actually have one at my company that you can test them. can't test the uh, Emerson, but you can test the GEs because GE used to do all these things. Uh, however, I found it just as well to go down to the distributor and hopefully he has a tester to test the things uh, otherwise you're doing a little bit blind but this is your biggest failure part on this thing and uh, as long as you check the bearings on that motor and be sure that they turn freely don't drag and this motor here it turns reasonably free uh, Probably about as good as you'd expect this motor to turn. Doesn't drag on anything. Note there's three wires coming into this thing. Uh, you can check the continuity of uh, the wires on this and we're going to do that. Okay, we're set up to check continuity of the windings. Uh, one thing before I did that, I would take a look inside here, see if these windings look okay. If they're all burned, uh, chances are the thing's toast anyway, so you may not even have to go to this step. So we're going to go ahead and put our probes in here. I'm putting the two on the end one, just like that. We've got three ohms. I'm going to take the red and put it in the center. And like we're running about three ohms again and because I never checked here there's three ways to set these up so that you check each winding it's a three-phase motor remember and it looks like we're running the same resistance in all three the last thing you do is you would put your probe on any of these put it in here your meter should be on meg ohms. There should be OL. Shouldn't say anything but OL. Now I'm going to go through that one more time with you on a close up to the meter. Now we're OL for our uh, resistance to chassis, which should always be. Now we're checking one winding. Looks like 3.1. About the same. And the last one looks like about the same tip. It's the same as testing any three phase motor. Okay, and there we are with the test of the variable speed blower uh, on the modern furnace. Okay, just a quick recap. Uh, this is most of your problems. Uh, if you do have a tester for it, you can use the test uh, tool. If you don't, you're going to have to take it into your 
the distributor and probably pick up a new one. He may be able to test it. Test the motor itself by testing the windings through here. And you've pretty much done everything you can do other than the fact that you rotate the uh, shaft to see if there's any drag in the shaft. And that is the ECM. These are pretty much taken over everything. We will have ECMs on virtually all motors. Uh, they'll probably get simpler and easier to troubleshoot as we go along. But this is pretty much the future for motor and drivers for motors in the HVAC industry. So we'll see lots of these in the future and I will be talking more about how these ECMs work as we go along.